Um, thank you all very much for coming tonight to celebrate um, Ronan's book and the launch of his second book, The True Nature of Our Reality. Uh, we're delighted our book up that Ronan has chosen ourselves to work with. Um, we drafted in oil from, from doctech.com to help with the editing and anybody who is engaged in the editing process of a book or in any shape or form of essays or whatever, you know it's a painful process. It's not an easy process. There's a lot of back and forth and particularly towards the end of the document, there's a lot of discussion around what stays in, what goes, um, and that can be painful. So when you're writing on a subject matter, you need to you need to have passion for it, you need to like what you're writing and you need to believe what you're writing. Um, and I think when you read Roman's book, you'll see evidence of all that in it and it's a true testament to himself. Also the fact that himself and I managed to stay friends during the whole process is actually a plus, so uh, getting the heated conversations every now and again. Before I talk about, about Roman and Henry's book, I'd like to read a poem if that's okay for you. Um, and the reason that I have picked this poem is because it touches on a lot of the themes that Roman has in his book. Obviously he goes into far greater depth and exploration in it, but I think it does set the scene for what his book is about and where it's go going to and where it's from. So if you don't want to just get the poem and get it up. So it goes, you may not have noticed, but nothing is normal. Yes, restrictions are lifting, and yes, we're taking back our lives again, but that feeling of it being over never came. Perhaps it never will. Because we are different now, forever changed by the last two years that really there is no going back. Some lost health, loved ones. Some lost legacies, businesses. Some lost their carefree beliefs that the world is indeed a safe place. But we all gained too. We gained some time with ourselves that we may never have, got, have taken. And we gained a perspective shift to know that life is a gift. And it's that what we must focus on going forward. You may not have noticed that nothing is normal. Because you're different now, your normal has shifted. And I think when we talk about things, I wish I would. <laughs> um, and when we look at themes, Ronan has many different themes running through his book, but there are definitely three that are inter interconnected throughout all of the chapters. And those, I think, I believe, are the spiritual awakenings, it is a very strong theme, as is consciousness self, and indeed, a new way of thinking and a new way of doing for people. Roland's books seek to explore and also to discover the fullness of what a human being means. He's used his own personal perspective and his own journey to do that, which is very difficult. It's very difficult to lay bare your soul for other people to read it. It's a very brave thing to do. Um, and it's brave because he did it because he wanted to help others who were going on their journey as well. So I think for due to, to Roland for doing that, I, I think he deserves a round of applause for that because that's something he's going to do. Another thing worth noting is that women's books have been acclaimed not only nationally but worldwide. So I don't know if any of you are familiar, there's a, a multi-million um, author, his name is Deepak Chopper, and he, um, he has endorsed women's book and he has actually written a testimony in the front of the book. Um, and as you know, from people of that calibre, it's not easy to get a, a testimony. So um, I think it's the richness of what Ronan has written and the importance of his message that has allowed him uh, to be recognised by people who are experts in, in the field that he's writing in. So um, that's no mean task, absolutely not. I suppose Niall, Niall touched on, on an area as well, which is, I suppose we, we all know the last two years have been horrendous for, for many in many di different shapes and forms. And then coming out of that, we're hitting a Ukrainian war where nobody knows where it's going to go, where it's going to end, will it end and how it will end. Um, so I think because of that and because of the global anxiety that is surrounding that, um, it's connected us to each other in, in a way that we haven't been connected before. And hence the true nature of 
our reality speaks to addressing the answers, and particularly the answers that we have questions about today. Um, and that's, I think, the beauty of one's book, to be able to delve into them and to look at them in depth and explore them. Um, so just before I introduce Ron, I'd just like to say, behind every person who writes a book, particularly in, in this case, Ronan, he doesn't do it by himself. There's a very strong team behind him. And I know during the editing process, he was very clear in saying that all along, that he wouldn't have been able to do it without Sharon, without Rebecca, without Adam and without Jack. They were a huge pillar of support to him throughout it. And it does take more than one person to do it because it impinges on, on everybody's life when somebody takes an undertaking for a book. Um, so well done to you all for sticking with them and, and encouraging him along the way. And lastly, thank you. Thanks very much. Um, God, it's amazing, you know, when you look and you see all the names come on the tags, first of all, and then everybody turns up and you, you realise um, how blessed you are when you have so many really, really good people in your life. Um, thank you, uh, every one of you, for coming. It's, it's, been, it's been a really special life so far, and it's going to be even more special. Um, I just a couple of thank yous, first of all. Um, obviously, you said it, Susan, that Sharon, jeepers, I'm only one-tenth of the man I ever was <laughs> without Sharon. She's just, um, she, she's been such support for so many years. I was saying to most people, I said, I think everybody's here to see her, probably. <laughs> um, and thanks to the kids, you know, Rebecca and Jack, and Adam's gone back to Spain, but, um, you know, the three of you have been part of the journey as well, and um, it wouldn't be the same without you. Um, also, just thanks to my mother and father-in-law, Donald and Mary. You know, when I was sick and when I wasn't in, in great form, they were such, such good support. Um, I owe an awful lot to them. I, my own mum and dad have passed away, but they've stepped into to that, that vacuum and they've really filled it. Thank you so much. It's a joy. <laughs> also, thanks to the Stores and the Comments group for, for, for the, the fantastic facilities and Rory, the Comments and Sound to Light and Niall and the guys. I mean, I just asked Rory, I said, would you mind putting up the Niall Light or two? And he's put up all the screens, he's done everything, and, and he's just gone over, overboard. And thank you so much, it's made such a difference. Thanks so and thanks to you guys, I mean, Book Club Publishing, it, it's, you've been fantastic. And it is, it is an interesting journey when you're with your editor and your director, and it's a, it's a lonely journey if you don't have one. And um, like, I found that um, working with the two of you was just was, was brilliant. There was never was an issue with ringing any time when we talk about anything. And um, your, your insight and your advice was just fantastic all the way through. Um, I did the first one on my own, and it's, it's definitely not the same, so it's not. It's, it's, it's definitely something much, much better when you share it with, with a team. So thank you so much for everything you've done. No, it's been great. Thank you. I'm not going to forget anybody, but I'm not going to forget you guys. Thanks a million. All of you have touched my life in, in so many different ways. And, you know, I, I think I've met nearly everybody. If I haven't, come up to me, please, afterwards. But all of you have been, have been a part of my life and have meant so much to me. Um, and we all intertwine with each other's journeys. And mine wouldn't be the same without you. So thanks a million for turning up tonight and uh, appreciate it all. Thank you. Thanks to the rest of my, my, my family, my brothers, my friends, and uh, my soccer teammates, my horsey teammates, and everybody else that's going on. Um, and thanks to all the guys and Rooney's that, that allow me to do what I do as well. So they, they let me go off and do my thing. So thanks for all that. Um, I suppose, if you don't mind, I, I just wanted to use this platform maybe to just share one or two things with you, if that's okay. Um, and the first thing is that Niall did say we did meet um, and had a coffee. I think what he, what he didn't say was that I was just after coming out of the hospital. So I was just three months in hospital um, from depression. And I had had a breakdown, but I called it a breakthrough as such. But um, what Niall didn't mention was that that was the day where I met him, and that's the day we decided we were going to go on this journey. And um, this journey is, is it's a five book journey. So the first book, The Secret of Life, has already been published. Um, the second book is The True Nature of Reality. The third one is Awareness of the Soul, and it's, it's almost ready, and that'll be ready next April. So I'm going to see you back here again next year, <laughs> in 20, 20, 20. Um, And then there's two more books after that. So it's, um, I think it's important. I was going to take, take my time with them, but I think it's really important. The message that is in throughout the whole series has to come out now. I think it's really urgent. Um, and Susan touched on a couple of the things, as did Niall there, of what's going on with the world, and things are changing to so there. 
and the norm, as you said in the poem, the poem is so pertinent. The norm has changed for all of us and, and we have to embrace the new norm, which is definitely different. So really what I wanted to talk to you about, I suppose, was the reality series. You know, we talk about spirituality and that's a word that people get kind of freak out about. And, and in the past, they used to get really worked up over it. What I would say to you is, is a couple of things. I mean, we are made up of, of the physical, the emotional, the mental, and spiritual. We are, the, we are made up of four different layers. The problem with this is that we are using basically our physical nature to define reality around us. So what I mean by that is that this is all physical stuff. You know, that this is the things we touch, and we use our only physical senses to actually try to understand what the world is about. But there's an awful lot more than just physical. I mean, even your thoughts and your emotions and the spiritual side of you, they're not physical at all, but they're a huge part of you. And what I would say to you is, from a spiritual perspective, I don't talk about religion in spiritual measures. Basically, spirituality for me is the realization of the self. It's finding out who you really are and reconnecting with who you really are. So that's the journey of life. It's finding out who you really are and, and not the person that has been conditioned by society, not the person that your parents told you you should be, not the person that your teachers told you you should be, or even the person that you thought you should be yourself. It's a journey to find out who you really are and to express that. And the reason for that is that, basically, if you think when you were seven, when you were 12, 15, 20, 30, some of us, I'm going to put it up and stop now. <laughs> if you just think about it, that sense of self, the sense of I that you had when you were a seven-year-old, or 20-year-old, or 50-year-old, or 70-year-old, it's the same. That hasn't changed at all. If you think back, that sense of I has not changed all the way through. Your physical body has changed. Every seven, 10 years, all of the cells in your body are replaced. So this is not the body that I had seven, 10 years ago. It's totally different, but yet I'm still here. So basically we are, we are way, way beyond, we're way beyond the physicality of us. We're way beyond our thoughts because our thoughts are triggered by conditioning. Now, I still think that things are really, really actually positive. I think we're going to turn around, but it, we are all embracing a major shift. And the thing is, if you embrace it and if you move with it, you'll be fine. If you don't, you're going to be coming, kicking and screaming. I can tell you that. So I think, if I was to say one thing, I would say open up to, to new ideas. Open up to finding out who you really are. And realize that the person who you really are is a big part to play in. Divine, it's a divine plan, it's a big plan. We're all interconnected. And we all have a specific part to play in that plan. And we owe a duty to ourselves, not just to ourselves, but to everybody else to play that part. Not just to play the part that somebody else tells us to play. We have to find out who we are inside, who is our authentic self, and express that. Because that is a huge part to play in the bigger picture. And I know it is hard, you think about Ukraine, and there's so many challenges. I mean, we had financial challenges first of all, with financial crash, then we had a property crash, then we had COVID, then we had terrorism in the middle of it all that. And now we have Ukraine. Like the reality is, the world has always had challenges like this, and it always will have. But the thing is, you have to switch out of it yourself. The media need to push it down to us all the time, and they say they push us out extrovertedly. So they stop us from going within and realizing that there's peace within us. And they push us out, and they show all the drama all over the world. But I, I think Rona Scully is still here. Rona was on the Royal FM before me the last day. And we were talking about the challenges that Rona sees over in Africa and in Ukraine. Like, they're so challenging. But at the same time, I was listening to his interview, the amount of people who have, who have come out and done, done, done such amazing good, amazing good like, and, and have put together plans and have done so much, like, that whole challenge of Ukraine has brought so many people together and has brought out so much love in so, much, so many aspects of society. So certainly I think, yeah, we have to look at Ukraine and we have to obviously, obviously empathize them and it's absolutely horrible. You know, you go to bed at night here, we go wake up in the morning, we don't think about it. They're under shelling all the time. It's just horrible. But what I would try to say to you is that everything is happening in actual perfect order, believe it or not. If you could only get out of yourself and look at it from a higher, a bigger perspective. What I mean by that is that we look at things from an ego perspective, which is an individual I. That's the way we were trained to. But if you can step out of that and see from a different perspective, if you, if you were able to see from a real height and be able to see all the interconnected activities that are going on in the world, you'd realize that actually they're happening specifically the way they're supposed to. So it does look like the horrible things are happening around the world. It looks like politics is crashing. It looks like all our global systems are crashing. You have our economics. One side of the world, we're burning food. On the other side of the world, people are starving. It doesn't make any sense. Our financial markets are so fickle. Something small happens in Japan and everything else goes pear-shaped. 
So you have to look at it, there's really, the paradigm shift is happening, there's a global system breakdown. So the systems are not working and they're breaking down. And the challenge for us is to embrace the new systems. And the challenge I had with that over the past number of years was that I thought, I'm going to have to try to, I, I, I understood what it all meant, but I said, I'm going to have to really try to help other people and change them. And, and this, for me, was a burden for a number of years. Until the last couple of years I realized, actually, no. Our journey is not about changing anybody else, because everybody has that part to play, whatever that might be. Our journey is about ourselves, and finding out who we are, and just expressing that. And there's such freedom in that, because you can say, yeah, there's turmoil going around all around the world, but I can stay in a state of peace and grace if I choose to. And you actually can. You look at people like Gandhi, who were in the most horrible situations years and years ago, yet they stayed in a state of grace. How do they do that? We, that is open to all of us. We can actually do that. So what I realized what there is there's always going to be turmoil in the world because there's polarities. There's good, there's bad, there's hot, there's cold. There's polarities in this world because it's, that's the nature of this universe. It's polarities. So there's always going to be good and there's always going to be evil, we call it. But it's evil deeds that happen, not evil people. So basically, what we need to do is to realize that there's good out there and, and most of it is good. And we have to have the balance. And basically, we need to embrace it and take it on. So what I'd say to you is, maybe to, to leave you with this, um, I think we're in a really good place. I think that an awful lot of us are changing. I think that the next generation are way more evolved than us. And thankfully, they're the ones that are going to be taking control from the ones who are running the, the world at the moment, which we're making a bit of a hands of um, they're, they're losing control. It seems like things are escalating, things are getting worse, because like, like with any kind of a disease, it gets worse first of all. It has to actually express itself before it's actually treated. So what actually happens is all of the badness that's out in the world, or all that is imbalanced and out of balance, comes to the fore so that it can be actually wiped away. So that's what we're going through. It feels like it's turmoil. But the one thing I can leave you with is, I was in India just before Christmas, and it was the strangest thing. And we talked about it earlier on. I was meditating, it was, it was 12 days meditating, and there was no drinking for it. So, <laughs> so, so I was meditating for about seven or eight hours a day, and I was actually going down to this action, and I remember being almost kind of, well, I don't want to say high, high is a funny word to use, but it was like being intoxicated because I was so in touch with, with my spirituality or my essence or whatever. But at the same time, I was walking past these people who were in absolute poverty. They were, like, I mean, it was just heartbreaking how they live. And I was found myself in two different states of consciousness, which is what myself and I talk about. Different states of consciousness which we go through. But what I found is I was in two states of consciousness at the same time. Because I had this empathy, I felt this horrible sadness for the, for the people around me, what, what they were going through. And at the same time, I was high and elated because I was so in touch with my own self inside. And I remember walking down and saying, that's what it's all about. So there can be turmoil around the world and you can actually stay in a state of grace. And if you do that, and if everybody else does that in the world, then what do you have? Nirvana, heaven on earth. So that is the end goal. The end goal is not to change the world, it's not to change other people, it's to change yourself in the midst of any turmoil that's out there, and to stay connected with that essence and to express that. And we can all do that, and you can do that in a moment. So what I'd say is, if anybody's having any challenges, mental, whatever, whatever challenges you have, what I'd say to you is an awful lot of it is coming from your thinking. And your thinking follows a specific ritual pattern. So if you do nothing else except one thing, look at your thoughts, and between this thought and the next thought, there's a gap. And in that gap, you have total control of how the next thought is going to be. So you can decide, no, the way I usually think is this, this way, I'm not going to work tomorrow because I hate it and because I hate the boss, and, and it goes off like this. You can stop that. So the minute the first thought comes in, I'm not going to work tomorrow, you just change and say, no. I am, and I'm going to stay peaceful, and I'm going to stay and take it all in. And all of a sudden, you start changing it. And the situation might not change around you, but you change inside. You actually change, you become more peaceful, you become, in, you're in bliss in the midst of turmoil. So what I'd say, which is great, I don't have to change anybody else. I just have to express myself, my authentic self, that's all I do. And if we can do any one thing is support those people around us, not to change, not to make them think the way we think, not to make them into this person or that person, but to, for them to allow them to find out whoever they are and let them support them to actually express that. And I think, and I'll leave you with this, I think the biggest issue and the only challenge in all of the wars that we have 
that all of the terror, everything around the world that is wrong or bad, comes from one thing. And it's stopping people expressing themselves, their pure essence. Stopping them having their own beliefs, stopping them expressing themselves, stopping them speaking. So it's basically going against what I'm talking about. That's the biggest problem. Stopping people from expressing themselves, whatever that is, and allowing them. If all of us just allowed everybody else to express themselves and do whatever they wanted, as long as it didn't harm anybody else, we'd have nirvana, heaven on earth. So that's the end goal, nirvana, heaven on earth, which I thought was a place we needed to get to, but it actually isn't. It's, we can have it right now. If you just take it on now, the past is just past memories. The future is just imagination. The present moment is what's real. And in the present moment, we can decide, I'm happy, I'm blissful, I'm loving, whatever you want to, you know, whatever it is. You can decide that in this present moment and continue it. So you have total control, total control over your life. So when I say if there's something not going right, right in your world, what can I say? You've got the power to change it, like, you just have to do it. What I will say, and I'll finish this, is from the perspective of mental health though, sometimes if it goes too far, you lose your rationality and you need help. And what I will say is, from a mental health perspective, there is such fantastic help out there. So if anybody is having any challenges from a mental health perspective, talk to somebody. There are some amazing things out there that you can do. But one of the things that it did trigger something within me was that I found that those who go into hospital with mental illness, there's a 54 to 55% relapse rate, which I thought was crazy. But I remember being in the hospital and talking to people around me, and this is important to remember. The reason for the relapse is because they didn't take themselves out of the toxic environment they were in. So if it was a past challenge that they had that they weren't dealing with, they needed to deal with that. And if they didn't, it was coming back into their present moment all the time because they weren't dealing with it. Or else, what they were doing was staying in a toxic environment. So I mean, there was, there was a lovely lady who was going back into a, a house with domestic abuse. And she had been in the hospital three times. And afterwards she said, yeah, I'm going back again. I'll be going home again. So I mean, what I would say is, there is help out there. Um, it shouldn't leave me allowed to get that far because we have the power to change our thoughts before it gets that far. If it does get that far, there's really super help out there to help you and talk to people and empathize with people who do actually talk about mental health because sometimes we just look at them and go, yeah, okay, well, I'm not gonna talk to him again. But it's important to be open about it and talk about it. Um, I know we're doing a book, uh, The Millennium, millennium uh, sorry, Mental Health for Millennials. This is Niles, Niles Susan's project. It's their sixth volume. So I've written a chapter for the one that's coming out, Mental Health Day, next October. And um, I think, you know, when I was doing the research on it, I was really comforted because the millennials are class. Like, they really are. They think differently to us. They're way more open. They don't have the condition that we had. And they're the ones that will be taking over the world and running things. So if we can just get over the next probably 10 years, without blowing ourselves up, which I don't think will happen, <laughs> then we're going to be in good hands. So thank you so much um, for, for coming out. It's, 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 it's overwhelming to see so many of you here. What I really, really, really want though is please read the book and please engage with me on this website. It's ronrooney.com forum. It's in the book. Please ask me whatever questions come up or, and let's keep the dialogue going and talk about it because it, as Niall said, we're all interconnected. We're all in this together. And it is a huge paradigm shift that we are all moving towards, and it's much easier if we all go together and basically remind each other and make sure that, that we don't leave anybody behind. So thank you so much for, for coming, and, and it's lovely to see so many lovely faces, and Sharon, yours is the nicest. <laughs> thank you.